I am surprised that you agreed to do it. Why are you sitting down with us today? I'm very tired of all of the uh, lies. I've been hearing things and, you know, and seeing things on the blogs and, you know, I'm just, I'm just tired. What are the lies that you're hearing that disturb you most? Oh, my God. Um, all of them. Um, got little girls trapped in the basement, helicopters over my house, mm -hmm. um, trying to um, rescue someone that doesn't need rescuing because they're not in my house, handcuffing people, starving people. I have a harem, uh, what you call it, a, um, a coat. Mm -hmm. I don't even really know what a coat is, but I, I know I don't have one, you mm -hmm. know. Have you done anything that you regret? Have you done anything wrong? Lots of things wrong when it comes to women that I apologize, but I apologize in those relationships at the time I was in the relationships. Have okay? you broken any laws when it comes to women? Absolutely not. The six-part series interviewed 50 people, mm -hmm. family members, your former tour manager, numerous women who all claim that you abused them. Yeah. Are you saying everybody in that documentary was not telling the truth about you? Everybody? If, if, if you really look at that documentary, which I'm sure you have, I have. everybody said something bad about me. Nobody said nothing good. Mm -hmm. They was describing Lucifer. I'm not Lucifer. I'm a man. I make mistakes, but I'm not a devil, and by no means am I a monster. I'm going to name the names. Andrea Kelly, your ex-wife, Kitty Jones, mm -hmm. Lisa Van Allen, Lizette Martinez, Jerron DePace, mm -hmm. Faith Rogers, yeah. Asante McGee. You're saying everything they said in that documentary about you is not true. They are lying on me. Why would these women say the same thing about you, that you are controlling, that you are abusive, that you tell women when to eat, when to go to the bathroom, when they can sleep, where they can dress. Why would all these women tell these different stories about you if they were not true and they don't know each other? That defies logic to me. Right, right, until you hear the explanation. You can start a rumor on a guy like me or a celebrity just like that. All you have to do is push a button on your phone and say, so-and-so did this to me, R. Kelly did this to me, and if you get any traction from that, if, you, if you're able to write a book from that, if you're able to get a, a, a reality show, then any girl that I had a relationship in the past that I, it just didn't work out, she can come and say the same exact thing. Are you blaming this on social media? I'm talking about the power of social media. In 2008, R. Kelly was found not guilty on 14 counts of child pornography after prosecutors in Chicago failed to convince a jury that he was a man seen in a sex tape with a girl as young as 13. What do you want to say to your fans? Last month, Kelly was indicted again, this time charged with aggravated criminal sexual abuse of four women, including three who the charges say were minors at the time. Have you ever had sex no. with anyone under the age of 17? No. Never? No. I have to tell you, it's so hard to believe that based on all that we've read. I'm going to tell you something, Gail. There's one you. I'm going to tell you something. What women said about you. What women said about me. What women. So nobody's allowed to be mad at me and be yeah. scorned and, and lie on me. Mm -hmm. So they're lying on you. That's your explanation. They're lying on you. Absolutely. 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 You feel that people have maligned your character. I have been assassinated. I have been buried alive, but I'm alive. So I think the point you're making is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have never held anybody against their will. I don't need to. That, Why would I? Well, I'm, I'm, How stupid would it never be held for anybody. R. Kelly with all I've been through in my way, way past to hold somebody, let alone four, five, six, fifty, you said, why, how stupid would I be to do that? I didn't say you That's were holding... That's stupid, guys. I didn't... Is this camera on me? <laughs> yes, it's on. That's stupid. Use your common sense. Don't forget the blogs. Forget how you feel about me. Hate me if you want to. Love me if you want. But just use your common sense. How stupid would it be for me to, with my crazy past and what I've been through, Oh, right now, I just think I need to be a monster and hold girls against their will, chain them up in my basement, and, and don't let them eat and don't let them out unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle. Robert, Stop it. Y'all quit playing. Quit okay. playing.
Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this I gave y'all 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. Y'all trying to kill me. You're killing me, man. This is not about music. I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids, and I can't do it. What, what? Y'all just don't want to believe the truth. You don't want to believe it. At this point, we briefly pause the interview to give Kelly a moment. His publicist helped calm him down. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're going to let the camera keep true. rolling. This is not true. This is not, doesn't even make sense. Why would I hold all these women? Their mothers and fathers told me we're going to destroy your career. But Kelly's emotions remained raw. It's real girls out there missing. It's real young girls out there being abducted, being raped, okay? They really are on chains. They really do have chains on their, on their wrists, and they can't get out. Robert, and they're ending up buried in deep. Robert, we have to have a conversation. This is really. not I, me. I don't want you just ranting at the camera. I, I, think I came here for them to hear me okay, talk. But I need help. What kind of help? This is the kind of help I need. Yes, what kind of help? I need somebody to help me not have a big heart because my heart is so big, people betray me, and I keep forgiving them. You sound like you're playing the victim here. You sound like R. Kelly. You do. When I listen to you, I'm it just does sound the like truth. you're playing the victim I'm card. just telling the truth. And the reason I'm emotional, Robert, and I apologize you... for that, no, no, is because no, this no. is the first time I was able to, to say speak. something. Yeah. I've said nothing. Well, we're also hearing from the family of a woman who lives with R. Kelly at his home. The parents of Joycelyn Savage say that the singer not only abused but brainwashed their daughter. R. Kelly denies that and claims it was Savage's father who gave his daughter to him at a concert. I didn't go looking for a Jocelyn Savage. I was doing my show. He brought her and asked a friend of mine to put her on the stage with R. Kelly. Make sure she's on the stage. Mm -hmm. But in a news conference this morning, the Savage family says they have no doubt that Joycelyn is being held by the singer against her will. We went from seeing you or talking to you daily or weekly to not seeing you in two years. So that is a clear indication to us and as a mother that something's definitely wrong with the situation. And we won't stop until we have our answers and make sure your well-being is okay. Well, joining me now is Renee Graham. She's an associate editor and columnist at the Boston Globe. Renee, I know you've been following R. Kelly's story very closely. I'm so grateful you could join us today. From Gail King's interview, what really stood out to you, Renee? You know, I, what was shocking to me about the interview is I, I think that R. Kelly and his people perhaps thought this would be able to paint him as a more sympathetic figure. And if that was the goal, I think it failed miserably. It, it, it came off looking like the latest chapter of Trapped in the Closet. You know, he was unhinged, he was overwrought, um, he was evasive. So I, I, you know, that's what really came off to me. It came off of someone who was trying to manipulate um, the audience, um, the way he allegedly has manipulated these women. You know, it was remarkable. So many people are commenting about Gail King and her composure. She actually was speaking to my colleague, Vlad and Anne Marie Green, earlier this morning, saying at no point did she feel that R. Kelly was going to threaten or harm her. But a tweet that you mentioned this morning kind of caught our attention, and you say, now we see exactly how R. Kelly believes, behaves when challenged by a woman. That was your tweet. Now we see exactly how R. Kelly behaves when challenged by a woman. What does this say about his track record, and what did you mean by that tweet? Well, you know, in, in Surviving R. Kelly, we, we heard women talking about um, not just sexual violence, but physical violence, and how if they didn't like the right basketball team, they would be slapped, they would be hit. Um, and this sense of domineering and control, being domineering and controlling. And that's what it felt like a little bit today. He is towering over Gail King, who is sitting there being the consummate pro as he is sort of screaming and flailing and crying and this whole sort of dramatic performance. And it just made you wonder that if that's what he does on camera, you know, what is he like when nobody's looking? Yeah. And, you know, at one point, Gail tells him, you know, Robert, Robert, I want to have a conversation with you. And he kind of calms down and he turns to her and says, I hope the camera's still rolling. And she says, yes, it is still rolling. But, you know, despite all of this, Renee, 
You mentioned that after the release of Surviving R. Kelly, streams of his music on Spotify increased 16%. R. Kelly does have a fan base. They've shown up after he's been released from jail. But based on the reaction to this interview, what do you think the court of public opinion has to say? I, I do think there may be a bit of a shift. I think it did make a difference when his longtime record label dropped him. Um, I think that there's a sense that, you know, he it isn't just about the money anymore with R. Kelly, that as someone to be affiliated with him, he's a bit of a liability. So, you know, he may get another bump on, on certain streaming services, and there may be a curiosity factor there. But I, 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 I want to believe that the, the career R. Kelly has had for the last 30 years is effectively over. Much has been written sort of about the progress within this Me Too era. You've argued that the voices of black women have been left out. Do you get the sense that people will now take their voices more seriously? I think what the movement has done is amplify all voices, and I would certainly hope that that would include the voices of black women uh, among them. You know, the, the thing we also have to get back to at R. Kelly's, these allegations have been out there for 25 years, a quarter of a century, and it seems like no one has ever really listened. They're listening now. People paid attention when he was arrested, people watched the documentary, and people certainly watched Gail King's interview with him this morning. So I have to think that their voices at last will be amplified, but it shouldn't just stop with the, the Kelly accuses. I hope it happens to, to other black women as well. You know, the unfortunate part of the Me Too era, Renee, is it takes moments like these to re-enter the public consciousness, to remind people again over and over again. How do you keep the attention up on a serious issue like this without having these explosive moments to get the world to sort of pay attention? Well, I think, you know, th there has to be a kind of societal shift with, with Me Too, and I think that's exactly what Tarana Burke had in mind when she founded this a decade ago. You know, it's about these big moments, but it's also about creating safe spaces where victims can tell their stories without repercussions. I and I think that's, that's what this comes down to. If, if it's just a sort of moment where it's R. Kelly on TV and flailing, but a woman in her office or a woman who works in a restaurant or a young man on his hockey team feels like he still has to keep that secret, then, then the movement isn't doing what it should be doing and we're not responding to the movement the way we should be. Are you optimistic, Renee, about the future? Cautiously. Cautiously optimistic. Renee Graham, we're always so grateful. We love having you on CBSN. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your time. Thank you, Rena.